And uh, just getting into the last segment for the podcast, my impressions, sorry to steal your own pun, um, on the analog DAC. And as I said earlier, didn't think we would talk about anything from analog for a while, Uh, but I did have a birthday this week and my wife very kindly uh, bought me an analog DAC. So just, you know, to ground it all, uh, you know, I have a analog Super NT, which is like a FPGA clone of a Super Nintendo that outputs to HDMI only. And basically the analog DAC, DAC being digital to analog converter, what it does is it takes the HDMI signal and then converts it into an analog signal. And why would you do that? It's because then I can plug it into a CRT. Um, and I do, I was lucky enough to pick up a really, really good Trinitron Sony TV that actually has component, sort of like an RGB semi equivalent. Um, and I never actually had anything that I could plug into component. So until I had this and I'd tried things like the Raspberry Pis. I had a, a hat for that, so that output it into composite, not to component. And yeah, so I plugged this all together. It's quite a convoluted setup because it's sort of like it plugs it into the Super NT and then that has an output into the analog DAC and then that then plugs into my CRT and sort of hooked everything up, updated all the software, all updated all the hardware, everything like that. And I kind of turned it on anticipating it not to work. Just because, you know, with these things, they're, they're quite pedantic. Um, and then I fired it up. And, I, dude, I have to say, like, I, I started playing uh, Donkey Kong Country 2 Diddy's Conquest. And, man, I was, like, blown away. Like, I know I'm very pedantic with these kind of things. But, like, I, I literally cannot wait to, to show you this in person whenever that's going to be. It To me, and maybe I'm just, like, I don't know, I'm, like, delusional but it just feels so good. And it's sort of like, it's kind of almost like a weird, stupid thing that I'm about to say, but it's like, it just feels like a crisper HD version of our, of our childhood. <laughs> like it just looks so clean. Like it blew me away. Okay. Like how, so it does. Have you tried with that Trinitron, just trying your original SNES? If I don't know if you still got it with the game. No, I don't have my, I guess, you know, I'm far too kind. I actually gave away all my games and my NES and SNES to a kid that basically had nothing. It was like this poor kid that we knew. Because the um, Trinitron by itself is a is a great CRT. So I'm like, does it actually look better? Or are you thinking of, oh, this is what it used to look like? Or first of all, okay, this is what it looks like on an emulator or whatever, which is not going to look anything as good as this. Like, that's what I'm wondering. Does it actually look better? Or is it, do you think it's the TV? Know. <laughs> I'll be I'll be fully open. Like from my perspective, it from my recollection, yes. But you know, like and just putting on the record here, I think it'd be really good because you still have your SNES, right? Yeah, it's pretty yellow at this point. But yeah, yeah. I, like so, when you do have an opportunity to be released from your government enforced <laughs> <laughs> prison, um, you know, and you do make it up to Sydney, like if you can, and this is asking a lot. You should bring the SNES up because we should hook it up and just check it. But I don't, it just... I don't own Donkey Kong Country 2, so <laughs> we'd have to No, do no, it. but I've, I've uh, got the cartridges. I've okay, got everything. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, so we should do it. We should test it to see what it looks like because maybe it's just nostalgia goggles and maybe I'm so delusional, but I was playing through it. And, you know, and again, <laughs> okay, I'm going to really sound like, a, like an idiot right now, but, you know, because we recently played Donkey Kong Country and we were playing it, I played it on the Nintendo Switch Online because, you know, it got released on the Nintendo Switch Online. So, you know, I felt like I should play it there. I was playing through it and you know how I said I just cheated all my way through. I just saved states and got through the game. But I did feel like I wasn't, it didn't feel quite tight. And like, it was, this is not apples to apples because I wasn't playing Donkey Kong Country, but playing Diddy's, Diddy's Conquest Man, it just feels so tight, the game. And again, you know, everything with this, the way I'm playing it, it introduces no lag at all. Because, you know, it's the Super NT to the the DAC and then straight to the CRT. And none of those steps has any real frame lag. Like the only thing that has a little bit of lag is my wireless controller, but it's a really good wireless controller that is a low latency one. Um, It just felt really responsive, man. Like I was playing it and I was like, 
holy moly, I was blown away by it. And my wife did come up, right? And she looked at it and she's like, wow, this looks like really crisp. So I don't know, dude, like I, I'm super keen for you to bring up the Super Nintendo and it would be like, you know, I do have a sick sense of humor. I would find it hilarious if we plug it in to composite and everything like that and, and check them out. And it just looks pretty much the same. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, Like it would make me laugh. I, I love the idea of like all this big push over the last decade to get classic consoles going into digital signals and HDMI. And I just love the idea of then having you converted to bring it back. I just love that idea. Well, but it's to bring it back, but to be fair, it's to bring it back in a high quality format still for the analog world, if that makes sense. Because when we were growing up, you know, in Europe they had SCART, which is pretty high quality. Like it's basically RGB. Um, but you know, we, we played with composite. We, we were in like the worst region because PAL in Australia, like, you know, the games didn't even run at full speed, which we didn't know at the time. And then it wasn't until you got onto emulators and things like that and played it there. It's like, oh, this game plays faster and feels better almost. Um, so no, nah, look like, you know, this is not a full on review or anything like that, but I was just really impressed with how well the unit worked and, you know, like analog in a very complimentary way, like to me feels like a bit of a, like an apple of that whole retro gaming scene. It just, you know, you plug these devices in, like they have really like small touches that I love because I'm very pedantic. Like even the fact that the, the color and the LED on my Super NT can be synced to the LED color and display on the analog DAC, so they're like synchronous. Sorry, like so they both could be red or both rotate colors. Stuff like that to me is like I just find that to be a very high level professional touch. Just sorry, when that... you say the word DAC, it just makes me laugh because that's like <laughs> why oh, is the word to DAC someone right? Is that oh, DAC is that, them. is that a thing outside Australia? I don't think so. You should explain what that is. So that's when you like run up to someone and pull their pants down. So it's like a, it's something kids would do to other kids to be horrible and like, you know, oh, I'm going to dack you in front of your mates and stuff like that. I don't know what, why YouTube. dack would be the word. It is the word, but I don't understand the etymology of it. I don't know, but it's like, you know, like how wedging is a thing. It's kind of like a similar thing there. And it's kind of horrible. Like when you think about it, like I, I, I happened to me as a kid, no joke. Like I, when I was living in England, um, like kids go to, pubs in england all the time right just with yeah that's their family places and some some asshole kid dacked me in the middle of that pub like as as a kid and i'm like i'll, I'll still remember that and so you, you've given me ptsd <laughs> now talking about this actually it's funny you say that because yeah in england in australia like i don't really think many people do like a wedgie no, like that no. that feels very american but yeah people did get dacked and, you know, in America, it's more like people get the wedgie. But I feel like the DAC thing is way worse. Like, way, way worse. Like, I'd rather get wedgied than get dacked. Well, also, it depends if people, like, try to do the full DAC on you. Like, if it's just oh. your pants <laughs> and try to, like, get it, grab an extra piece of material there, then you're off. I have to say, you know, it, more the dacking, especially the full dacking, to me, that. That's almost like sexual assault these days. <laughs> that's, that's, oh, man. Full decking. Yeah, of course it is. Like, I think it, yeah, like, obviously <laughs> intent does matter, but still. Come on. <laughs> no, it doesn't. It doesn't. It, at least in Australia, the law standard is how you feel about it as a victim, not about the intentions of the perpetrator. So if you felt like you've been, you know, sexually assaulted, that's all it, the threshold is. I, lo I love how your first impressions segment was suddenly talking about sexual assault. <laughs> <laughs> on, on children. <laughs> but yeah, it's funny you say that because DAC is a very common term in, uh, in audio production and like electronics. So for me, it was really familiar. So it, yeah, it didn't, it didn't click like that. But um, yeah, just to sort of, you know, sum it up. I think that, you know, if you're on the fence, like, and, and I should be clear as well that, you know, there are a lot of um, systems that take in HDMI signals and then bring it back into analog signals. This product only works on analog products. 
So it would only work on like the Super NT, the Mega SG. It will work on the analog pocket, which I'm really pumped about because that means that I can play in, like next year whenever I receive mine. I'm lucky enough to get get one. Um, I'll be able to play uh, uh, Game Boy Advance games on a CRT. So like, I mean, like that to me is like heaven. I'd like, I can't wait to play, you know, Metroid and Castlevania, those great games on the GBA on a CRT. Cause it's actually really hard to play consoleized versions of, of, uh, the Game Boy Advance. So yeah, like I, I'm super pumped about it again, like I said, and it is very like an Apple thing, right? Like it only works with analog products from a HDMI. There's like some kind of special thing that they do that the way that they transmit the signal. It's not just like a regular HDMI signal. Um, so it only work with analog stuff. So if you do have a Super NT or a Mega SG and you are thinking about, you know, like, hey, I'd like to get this on the CRT that I have. And again, like I don't have, you know, a Sony PVM or BVM or, you know, RGB monitor. Like this is just a consumer grade trinitron that does have component so which that is not completely standard um I, you know like i said i plugged it in and to me it looks like unreal it looks so good and i have to say like I, oh i know i'm very pedantic like as a person but i really genuinely cannot see myself going back and playing these games on emulator or on um you know the, the nintendo switch like the you know, super, super NES and NES stuff that's on there. Like it's just so much better on a CRT. I just, I just cannot go back. Like, I feel like I've, I've wrecked myself with that. So yeah, like I said, you know, if you have these products, it's very, very niche audience. I would highly recommend this product. And again, the shipping to Australia is disgusting. Please analog, do something about it. It's horrible. Um, but yeah, no, no, I really like it. It was really good. Thumbs up, big thumbs up from uh, impressions from me. Big th- Big thumbs up for full dacking from Intergod. <laughs> you want to get dacked with the analog products. That's that's the summary. 